So it seems that Google are developing an operating system not based on the Linux kernel. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about my thoughts on this. Not necessarily the specific technical details, but rather just the prospect of a competing kernel in today's current ecosystem of operating systems and the like. So the big kernels at play these days seem to be the sort of Apple slash BSD one, the BSD one in a more pure sense, the Linux one and the Windows one. So as it currently stands, Google's operating systems, which are Android and Chrome OS, currently use the Linux kernel. The Android operating system uses the Linux kernel on top of, I think, its own user space, whereas Chrome OS seems to be built on top of Gentoo, which is quite an unusual Linux distribution to choose to base your operating system off of, but a lot of people seem very happy with Chromebooks, so I'm not going to question that decision from a pragmatic standpoint. So, uh, it seems that this distribution, or this uh, kernel specifically, and this operating system seems to be developed with the Internet of Things in mind, which to me makes a lot of sense because there have been a lot of people that have uh, raised very legitimate con security concerns with the Internet of Things devices running Linux kernel, Windows, any of the current operating system kernels now being developed for the Internet of Things. There seem to be a lot of people who have uh, privacy concerns and security concerns. And most articles I read, even in the non uh, sort of industry specific magazines and websites definitely seems to indicate more problems with the Internet of Things than with solutions. In fact, the Internet of Things seems to have um, really struggled with pointing out the problems that currently exist and what the Internet of Things uh, will do to solve them. Because if something isn't solving a problem, I don't see it as a step forward. I just see this as some kind of gimmicky marketing thing. But of course, um, it's arguably worse than that because of the security flaws that others have, have raised. Now, this might be a call for a very specific type of kernel that can deal with this kind of thing in a secure manner. And it does seem for the most part, it, actually it seems for, for the, the whole part, that the operating system, the kernel that uh, Google are developing is open source. Uh, I've seen parts of it um, under the MIT license, I've seen part of it under the Apache 2.0 license. So. It, and also the Java, the JavaScript competitor, which they're putting as a software layer on top of that, or as a, as a, as a component of that called Dart, I think it is, is also open source and cross platform as well. So it doesn't, to me, indicate that Google are developing, developing an operating system so that they can, um, sort of cordon off a part of the internet so that they can proprietize part of the internet. Cause it doesn't seem like that is in Google's kind of way of thinking. Now, I work with Google on and off a little bit on various different ways, obviously, mostly through YouTube. And Google's way of conducting business seems to be outsource almost everything. It seems to be find like a cottage industry company that can do what it is that they want to do really, really well and just hire them and outsource the work. That seems to be how Google tend to operate. They don't tend to absorb a lot of things. They seem to be, uh, they seem to work in a community kind of fashion for the most part. Obviously, I'm sure many of you Google skeptics out there are going to disagree and, and, and feel free to do so in the comment section below. Um, but from my personal first hand experience of working with Google is that they definitely seem to be perfectly happy to work with other companies without any kind of long term goal of taking them over. Whereas you've got companies like Microsoft, which seem to want to buy up everything that they ever touch. So I certainly see that whereas there are definitely big problems with huge monolithic companies like Google. And I think the fact that the human race seems to have decided to consult this one company on its entire search engine and ergo sort of knowledge needs like Google is a corporate library almost at this point in how it sort of catalogs and chronicles things. And that is incredibly dangerous. That is, that is, that is in, because that means Google can control the flow of information and the flow of knowledge. Like how much knowledge do people derive from Google? So, so that is a problem. So using a non Google search engine to me, at least is almost essential at this point, regardless of your feelings on Google, just handing one company that much power, not a good idea. Not a good idea. And I'm sure many of you guys agree with me on that one. But that being said, when it comes to the tech giants, Google is, is, is probably in most cases far from the worst. So it seems like they're building an open source operating system with some of the open source components that they've been developing. And it might not necessarily move into the mobile space. It may not necessarily move onto the desktop in terms of Chromebooks, but, um, but rather it could just be a kernel of the internet of things. But let's take the, 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 the quote unquote worst case scenario. And let's say that Google decide that they're going to roll out this kernel, not only on internet of things devices, 
but they're you know the the Android tablets. Uh, they're going to incorporate it into the whole Android system, so it's going to be on phones. And what if they incorporate it, of course, into Chrome OS as well as a big central kernel component? The entire Google ecosystem will all share this one kernel. Well, it's a competing kernel. Um, but it is also open source. So it would not really be that different to if BSD got a solid foothold in desktop operating system markets or the mobile markets, and I'd still be fine with that. So the big question is, is is this corporate backing going to make it overly ambitious or is it going to start closing off features and options? Is it going to start to proprietize the system? And it doesn't seem like that is necessarily going to be the case, even if Google is, is, uh, you know, at at its most ambitious. I could, of course, be wrong, and this could, of course, spell doom. But we have options. That's the thing. Like, there is nothing compelling us to hand over all this power to Google. It's something that we completely do as a way of... I'm not necessarily going to call it a free choice, because a lot of people make it out of a sort of a compulsion that they're not necessarily aware of. For example, brand awareness. Google have huge amounts of brand awareness, which gives them, again, it gives them more power. It's, it gives them power when you have that kind of awareness and that kind of brand privilege, because their, their very company name is a verb now. And... That is worrying, you know, in the way that it's just such a universal verb as well. This isn't, you know, this isn't Nike's just do it or, um, you know, you should have gone to Specsavers kind of catchphrasing. This is, uh, this is very much incorporated much deeper into our language. So obviously the corporate skepticism is there, but the thing about open source and the very essence of open source is that it doesn't matter who develops the code. Hitler could have developed the code for all it's worth. If it's good code, it should be welcomed into the open source environment as far as i'm as far as i'm aware um you know maybe you know may, maybe i'm over trusting maybe i'm i'm being a bit flippant but um i think that the the, the essence of, of of open source there are pro- there are probably people in the open source community who i absolutely hate if i if i were to ever get to know them but you know what you know if they make good code and they are a positive contributor you know contributor to the entire open source ecosystem then you know then then the problems with me and not with them as it almost you know as it were so I'm not scared in the way that some people are, are, are a little bit concerned that Google are going to m- make a grab for, for, for more uh, power in, in regards to, you know, I don't think they're going to ditch the open source agenda that they currently have. It might not be an open source agenda which sees eye to eye to with, with a lot of um, open source enthusiasts, um, so, you know, sort of who might be subscribed to this channel or who even might be sort of... Um, sort of so anti-Google that they're not even watching this on YouTube or watching on YouTube at all. But... Um, but yeah, it 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 just it, it it seems it seems like it seems like it could even be a step in a positive direction because you know source code developed for the the Google kernel. Well, there could be ideas or there could be concepts or there could even be code that could be moved across to other projects as well or developed or you know more ideas, more 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 code in the system. You know, providing that that it's managed well and it seems that it is can only really be a positive thing. And at worst case scenario, we ditch Google and, and you know, we, we have nothing to do with them ever again. And I'm sure some of you have already gone down that road and that's perfectly fine. So again, I see positive things on the horizon for this one. I know that some of you are, I, I know that even just from the sort of, from the sort of um, feeling of this video, I feel like I'm going to come up against a lot of resistance, but um, if it's open source and if it makes the internet of things secure, I think it's that those are, those are two positive things uh, right off the bat. Um, and as long as, you know, and Google have, have given us open source offerings before. They've given us WebM. Well, I know that WebM might not necessarily be as good as, um, MP4, but it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's certainly a positive addition, if you ask me. And it's something that I use as well when I, when I encode my videos. I try and keep it as free as possible. So that's my thoughts. I'm going to link to the article, which this comes from down in the description below, but please understand this is all rumor and hearsay right now. This is gossip. But this is a tech blog rather than any kind of news site. Uh, so, you know, don't, please, please don't come to me as a source of Linux news. I literally just pick out stuff that I personally find interesting and talk about it. I don't like, uh, you know, when some people ask me, why am I not covering subject A or subject B? It's like, well, I might not necessarily be aware of it. I just also might not have any thoughts on it either. So, you know, it, you have the right, you have the right to not have an opinion as well on this channel, as well as, as, as having one. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.